Hey folks, in this video, we're gonna do the 1 billion row challenge only in Rust. Now the 1 billion row challenge was started in the beginning of this year in 2024, and it looked at how we can take a data set that looks like this, which is a plain text file containing 1 billion observations and crunch it down into uh, bite-sized results, where we're gonna find the minimum, mean, and max value per station. Now for this, I'm gonna use the Data Fusion library in Rust. Data Fusion is a query engine and it's super, super powerful. You can learn about it more on your own. So let's dive in. So first things first, I'm gonna create a new Rust project. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add Data Fusion. We've already added Data Fusion. Now we need to actually add Tokyo. And I'm going to request the RT multi thread feature. The way I'm gonna approach this is by using a totally um, synchronous runtime. So instead of doing something like this with the Tokyo macro, as people are familiar with, I'm gonna be using a runtime. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use the data fusion prelude and then create our main function. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is create the runtime that we're gonna use from Tokyo. So we're gonna say let RT equals runtime new. And since we've used uh, unwrap as well, and since we've used the RT multi-thread feature, this is gonna automatically use all available threads. Now we don't have, we already have an issue. So we also need to import use Tokyo runtime, runtime. Perfect. So now that we've defined our runtime, let's also create the uh, execution context that we're going to be using for data, uh, for data fusion. So let's say let CTX equals session context new. Wonderful. Now, since what we're going to be reading in is a .txt file, we're going to be reading in a .txt file that looks like this. This is 12.85 gigabytes of memory, and it is semicolon delimited without any headers. After seeing this, we can specify the schema that we're going to be using with arrow. We're going to say we have two columns. One is station, and the other one is temperature. So we're going to create fields for this. So we're going to say use data fusion arrow data types. And we're gonna need a few things here. We're gonna need data type, field, and schema. Now we're gonna create the fields that we're gonna be used in our schema. So we're gonna say let station field equal field new station. And the data type is gonna be UTF-8 and it is not nullable. Now we're gonna do a similar thing for the temperature. So let's just call it temp field, field new, temperature. And this data type is gonna be a float 32, and it's also not nullable. <clears throat> so from this, we can actually build our schema. Schema is new, and then it requires a vector of fields. So we're gonna say station field and temp field. Lovely. So from this, we're going to also create our CSV reader options. And if we look at this, we're going to be reading it using the CSV reading function, but this isn't actually a CSV. It is a semicolon delimited file. So we're going to have to make some adjustments. Let's call this let ops equals CSV read options new. And then we're going to specify the delimiter to be the semicolon character. And then we're gonna say it has no header. And then the file extension is txt. Perfect. So now using this, we're going to use our runtime to read in the file. So we're gonna say let df equals rt.block on and ctx read csv path and our options. Now, I haven't actually specified the path to uh, the big data set. So I'm just gonna copy in some 
nasty path. So if we didn't actually use this runtime block on function, all we're going to see here is that this is a future. So nothing will actually be executed without saying, hey, let's await the result. But since we're not actually using an async function, we can't do the await. So that's why we're using the runtime object. And by using this runtime object, we can provide this function if we were to make it into a real function to other language libraries using something like extender for R or PyO3 for Python. Now, I'm going to unwrap this because I feel confident and also lazy that I don't want to uh, do any error checking. Now we're going to do the important part, which is create our query plan. So we're going to say let results results future equals EF dot aggregate. And this is going to be the grouping expression. So we're going to actually group by the column, which is station. And then this aggregation step is going to be a little bit longer. So we're going to have a few things. So first we're going to get the minimum of the column, which is temperature. I'm going to copy that because that's hard for me to write. And we're going to give it an alias, which is min temp. We're also going to look at the average of that same column and give it the alias of mean temp. And lastly, we're gonna find the max of the same column and give that the alias max temp. If we just put a semicolon here, we'll see we'll get a result. So we're gonna unwrap that. And then the other important part about the 1 billion row challenge is that we need to also sort by the first column. So if we, if we look back here, this is all out of order and we have multiple observations for each location. And instead what we need to do is have each location in order by name. So we need to use the sort function or sort method. And this is going to take a, an expression and this is going to be the column that we're sorting by, which is station. And then we have to add a sort statement along this. So it's going to ask, are we going to sort ascending or descending? And then are any nulls going to be put at the beginning or end? So we're going to say we're going to sort ascending, which is true. And then we're going to put nulls at the bottom, which shouldn't happen anyways, because there should be no nulls. Now we're going to unwrap this and collect, collect the results. Here we have a future again, right? So because this is a future, it, nothing is going to actually happen until we say, hey, run this to completion. So that's where this runtime object comes in handy. We're going to say let results equal RT block on, and that's going to be a results future. Now, the fun part is we're going to make it look pretty. So we're going to use the data fusion arrow util pretty. Uh, the pretty module and we're going to say pretty format batches and we're going to provide a reference to our results it says we didn't use our schema mm, oopsies let's specify our schema here at schema okay perfect so we have no more warnings from our compiler which means it should work so let's do this cargo run release Hell yeah, look at that. So I've ran this a few times myself and I know that this takes anywhere between 26 and 28 seconds using this pretty simple uh, data fusion approach, which is super cool. Now with just like 44 lines of code, we've used data fusion and Apache arrow to process a billion records in just under 30 seconds. And you know what? That's pretty fast. So I'm pretty stoked with that. I hope you enjoyed this.